Welcome back to the Poker Vlog. This is episode number 207, and this is an incredibly special episode for multiple reasons. The first one is that this is the first ever hometown meetup game for Andrew. We go out to Detroit and play at the MGM Grand out there. The energy levels are insane in this in this vlog. I hope it comes through. And uh, the hands that we get into are, are very interesting as well, so you guys are gonna love it, but uh, it, this is a special episode for me for another reason. This has been in the works for a long time now, but I'm finally able to announce that I am uh, the new brand ambassador for the World Poker Tour, and I'm extremely excited about it. It's, I, I never thought that this would have happened, but for the last two decades, the World Poker Tour has been really the most reputable brand in poker, and uh, what they've done with their tournament series and you know, all the all the content that they've created around their final tables has been incredible and their plans for the future really sold me on the company. So I, I'm so excited to be a part of what's to come. Um, for me, uh, the WPT has a special place in my poker career. The first ever tournament that I've logged was episode number 13. I went out to Sacramento and played the Rolling Thunder $1,100 event and made a video of it. And that was five years ago now. Um, and then last year I went out to Cabo and played the 25K Heads Up event. I battled Daniel DeVoris and made the longest vlog that I've ever made. It was an hour and 10 minutes. And uh, the, one of the last tournaments that I cashed in was the WPT Deep Stacks event. So uh, yeah, WPT has a special place in my heart. I have a ton of respect for everybody from the top down. Their content creation team does a phenomenal job. I've known um, a lot of them for several years now and I'm just, super pumped up to be working with them. Uh, and just every opportunity that I'm gonna have at WPT is gonna be great. So uh, I'm gonna be streaming events, I'm gonna be uh, traveling the tour with them, I'm gonna be going to places inside the US and internationally hosting meetup games and firing in their tournaments. So I just get to, I, I get to play with you guys all over the world. The first meetup game event that I'm doing is gonna be May 12th at Choctaw in Oklahoma. And because that's the first meetup game event with WPT, we're gonna go above and beyond to make that one extra special and unique. It's gonna be one that you don't wanna miss at all. So mark your calendars for that. I'll more information in the description box below, but uh, we're, gonna, we're gonna go all out to make that one memorable. Um, there's been a handful of companies that have reached out and, and were interested in making, you know, kind of major deals with me in the past, but for one reason or another, uh, just didn't quite feel right. Whether the timing was off or the goals just weren't really aligned, everything with WPT feels perfect for me. Um, they, they want me to keep continuing to do what I'm doing and they just want more resources at my disposal for me to do some of the things that maybe I haven't been able to do in the past. And uh, I, I understand that, you know, the reason that they wanted to sign me wasn't necessarily for my poker abilities. It's because you guys have supported this channel in a way that just hasn't happened at all um, in the poker industry before. And I'm very much aware of that and very thankful for all of that. So I'm gonna be giving back to you guys at every opportunity that I can. And uh, I'm gonna be using WPT's resources and they're totally happy to do that. So that's gonna be super cool and just everything in the future is gonna be pretty amazing and I can't wait to share it with you. Um, in the meantime, I hope you guys enjoy this episode. Let's go ahead and get started. It's been a long time coming. Andrew and I have been doing meetup games all over the country for five years. Finally, we've arranged to have one in Andrew's hometown, Detroit. This city bleeds poker. Even my Uber driver plays. Naturally, I try to recruit him to subscribe. I'll definitely check out the YouTube channel too. Cool. It's gonna be a good trip. We've got a nice room on property. It even has a view of the downtown area. Off in the distance, you can see the Tiger Stadium. Since I've never been here, I need to explore and I've got the best tour guide that I can think of. Andrew takes me to get some craft cocktails down the road. We stopped at a few other places for dinner and then drinks before ending the night at this little Irish pub. Finally, we make it back to the casino. It's a great first night, but I'm a little disappointed because I didn't get to experience any of the music scene that Detroit's famous for. It's so cold in the, deep. the next day is meetup game day. I'm not exaggerating when I say a few hundred people show up. Some of them even came out to protest wrongful incarceration of cats. It's a special day, particularly for Andrew. He says a few words to everyone in attendance. <laughs> Time to get started with the poker. I buy in for a thousand. Lately, I've had this disease where I've been calling very light. I'll be trying to work on that today. 
We make our way to the first table and begin the session at 1.21 p.m. It's almost three hours before the listed start time because we want to make sure that we can play with as many viewers as possible. Ten minutes in, we've got ace-10 offsuit on the button, under the gun plus one limps in, middle position player calls, I prefer to raise rather than fold or call because I'd like to play a bigger pot in position against one or two players at most, rather than allow the small blind and big blind a chance to enter the pot without paying much for it. The big blind calls, the limpers call, we're going four ways to the flop in position, it comes ace-9 deuce with two clubs, it checks to me. Ace high flops are good for my range as the pre-flop aggressor, and my actual hand is probably best. I bet 45. I don't want to allow my three opponents to see free cards. The big blind folds, under the gun plus one calls, the middle position player folds, it's down to heads up. The turn is the king of diamonds, it's another card that's much better for my range than it is for the opponent's limp calling range. Under the gun plus one checks, I consider checking back for pot control, but I felt I was best on the flop. The king shouldn't have changed anything. I bet 115 to continue to charge strong type of hands and worse aces. Under the gun plus one comes out of nowhere with a check raised at 265. It's tough for me to make sense of this. He shouldn't have aces, kings, nines, or ace king that he'd be making this play with for value. Maybe he has a set of deuces, ace nine, ace deuce, or king nine. Maybe he just has some kind of draw. His sizing is very strange. It's tough for me to fold for 150 more when I'm getting almost four to one on a call. It kind of seems like it let me see where I'm at raised with one pair. If he has something strong, he'd still be giving me a good price to call with a flush draw. I call, this is becoming a big pot, the river is the five of diamonds, the front door flush draw misses, I'd be totally fine seeing the under the gun plus one player slow down and check. He couldn't care less. He bets 600. The major draws have missed, including some combos like Broadway cards containing two clubs. I'm feeling the severe case of my calling disease take over my body to the point where it's overwhelming. I call. It's a bad one. The opponent shows that he has a set of deuces. Of course he does. I feel dumb for losing the maximum. I feel dumber since it's only 10 minutes into the session. I thought he was trying to make a move on me because that frequently happens at meetup games. Plus, it's more fun if we get to showdown so that we're able to see what the opponent has for the vlog. Not $600 worth of fun though. I add on for a thousand more. I'm in for 2,000 total. It could be a long session, but I'm not losing my will. There ain't no mountain high enough to keep me from getting it all back. Here we've got Ace Deuce suited in the cutoff. I raised to 15. The small blind three bets to 60. He's a young guy named Zach from Maryland who flew all the way out here just for this event. It's 45 more for us, and we're in position with a suited ace. I don't mind folding, calling, or four betting. I call to give Zach an opportunity to make the vlog and win some of my money. We're heads up. The flop comes ace, queen, nine, rainbow. Pretty good for the three betters range. He bets 75. We can't let top pair go just yet. I call, but I don't love it. The turn is the king of spades. It's getting better and better for the three betters range. He jams for 465 total. I'm not going to make this mistake again. At least, not within 17 minutes of making it the first time, I need at least 18 minutes to recover. I fold. Zach is nice enough to let us know what he had without making me pay for it. He shows us that he has a two pair hand that he shouldn't have. He three bet me light to make a move, and he got there. I believe it. They always get there, whatever they need. A few hours go by without anything too remarkable happening. Then we pick up Ace Deuce suited again. I raised a 15 from under the gun plus two. The cutoff calls. The button is wanting to get into some trouble. He three bets a 60. He was set up pretty well to go for a squeeze and I've got good card removal. I four bets a 210. There are a couple good things that can happen as a result. One is that I win the pot right now. The other is that whether I win or lose, I can show that I four bet with a deuce in my hand, which should allow my actual strong hands to get more value when I play them aggressively. Another benefit is that if I show a willingness to 4-bet light, people will be less likely to 3-bet my opening raises. We picked a good time to make a move, both opponents fold, it's important that we show at least one card to let them know that they just got wrecked. We got that one through. Wow. <laughs> you guys know what the other one was. Three of clubs. Part of the reason that I included that hand is because it sets us up nicely when we get pocket kings less than five minutes later in the big blind. Under the gun plus two raises to 15. With the ace deuce four bet still freshly in everyone's mind, I three bet to 60. Under the gun plus two doesn't believe me. He calls, we're going heads up to the flop out of position. The dealer puts out 10, eight, five with two diamonds. This isn't a great flop from my three bet range due to the fact that I'll mostly only have one pair of hands at best. Meanwhile, the opponent can have pretty much all the sets. For that reason, I consider checking. Then I decide not to and bet 65. I wouldn't be surprised to get called light, given my image. 
Under the Gun Plus 2 matches the bet. We've got a large pot developing. I don't really want to see another diamond come out, but it may not be all that bad since we've got the King of Diamonds and would at least pick up a flush draw. Instead, the turn is the Four of Spades. It's a complete blank. Not much reason to check. I bet 150 to charge draws, top pairs, and hands like pocket queens, jacks, and even nines. The opponent calls once more. Now I really don't want to see a diamond. A flush draw is what I put under the gun plus two on the most. The river is another five. I'm happy with that card. I doubt our opponent would have made it this far into the hand with a single five. There really shouldn't be a ton of tens in this range either. In fact, he should only have ace ten suited and pocket tens. With this in mind, I check to feign weakness in order to induce a bluff from missed flush draws. If my opponent has queens or jacks, he may be inclined to bet for value, but that value will be going to us. Under the gun plus two checks back, we flip over the kings, it's a bit disappointing that there wasn't any betting on the river. Still, we win a nice pot to get closer to even on the day. I was hoping you had a flush draw and we're gonna... Oh, that's too bad. You did? Marissa, you gotta show for the vlog, man. Oh, okay. <laughs> Say it. Make something up. And it's an eight. You're 10 eight? What? We get to the fifth table of the night. It's by far the most lively one. I don't get into any vlog worthy hands initially, but a gentleman named Josh says that he'll give the dealer 20 bucks if I pull out the camera and start filming this bomb pot hand. I can't pass that up. That's your $20 Whoa. tip. That's you, no matter what. What's that? What if it doesn't make the vlog? It's going to make the vlog, I'm pretty sure. It's going to make the vlog. Come on. This whole table in here. Did you get that 20? Did yes. you get that 20? All right, can you go? We got the 20 in there. <laughs> We've got Jack-10 offsuit under the gun plus one in a nine-handed $10 bomb pot. The flop comes Jack-7-5 with all hearts. We've got top pair and some pressure to make this hand interesting because I want Josh to get more out of his $20 tip than just the gratification of taking care of the dealer. I bet 50 to clear out hands with equity. It might get through as people are folding one by one. Josh is excited for me to potentially take this one down. Yes, yes. Red for the win. He's gonna take it. You faded the. Oh, he's so in the hand. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> okay. I didn't know you had cards. You had a blooper. Oh shit! Uh -oh. I thought I was last. <laughs> now you're gonna make the blooper real. Oh, for sure. You're gonna make the blooper real. Small blind folded and accidentally exposed the ten of hearts while doing so. I'm glad he's no longer in the hand. I don't quite get through everyone. The big blind calls. It's down to heads up. No one can contain their excitement. Not sure exactly where I'm at. The dealer puts out the nine of clubs, giving us a gutter to go along with our pair. The big blind checks. It could be best, especially if the opponent just has the ace of hearts. Let's fire one more time to deny equity. I make it 125 to keep control of the pot. If we get called, I'm going to check back almost no matter what. The big blind does call. I'm very likely done putting money into the middle, especially as the king of diamonds comes out on the river. The opponent checks. No real decision for me. Check. Check. Nice. It'll make the vlog properly. Yeah. <laughs> dollars. Go. Let's go, Brad. Yeah. Nice. Woo. All right. Woo. Congratulations. Cheers. This half of the table's having a great time. The other half of the table. Not quite as much. The gentleman in the Yankees hat was the opponent who ended up being second best with 9-6 offsuit and the 9 of hearts. Previously he said that he wanted to make the vlog whether he won or lost. Now that he's lost, his feelings might have shifted. He still had plenty of money on the session though. Bit by bit, I'm trying to get to where he's at. At this point, we caught our way back to only being down a manageable $300. An hour later, we get involved in another bomb pot at the same table. We've got ace-queen offsuit on the button. The flop comes queen 10 7 rainbow. Checks to me. I bet 50 with our top pair. The big blind calls, the under the gun player calls, that's Josh. We're going three ways to the turn, it's the five of hearts. Normally I'd say it's a blank, but in bomb pots, you never know exactly which cards you have to fade. One of the opponents could have queen five offsuit, for example. Checks to me, ace queen is too strong to check back. I bet 140. The big blind lets his cards go. Under the gun, doesn't want to let us have it, he calls. This pot is getting large for a one pair hand when eight people initially saw the flop. The river is the nine of clubs, not a good one for us and several straights get there. Under the gun checks, it's hard to get called by too many worse hands. I check back, Josh turns over king 10 offsuit for second pair. We turn over the winner with top top. This pot gets us almost all the way unstuck for the session. Our stack climbs to 1970 so we're only down 30 after a rough start. It wasn't the biggest pot I've ever played, but it was, without a doubt, the nicest. Thanks dude. Thanks. Anybody else? Nice hand. 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 <laughs>
Thank you. We've got a little more work to do to get out of the hole. We easily pick up some ladies as if we were in our prime. Josh is under the gun and raises to 15. Josh has had such a great attitude the entire event. It's been a pleasure playing with him, and I'm sure the dealers love that he's been extremely generous with his tips. I can't really say enough good things about Josh. Still, he must be punished. His trip to Pain Town costs $50 up front and potentially a lot more on the back end. Josh calls, we're heads up in position, the flop comes 7-4 deuce rainbow, that's a good safe one for us. The opponent checks, not much to be worried about here, and Josh only has 250 left in his stack. I can quick stand him and have him in over his head before he knows it with small bets. I make it 50 again. Josh loves the mix of fine granular material and water. He calls, we don't want to see any overcards. The dealer puts out the nine of spades, that one seems okay. Under the gun doesn't mind it either. He leads for 75. He only has 200 total. We may as well play for all of it. I put in an amount to cover the opponent. There's very little hesitation before under the gun calls. We might be crushed. If we can come out with the victory, we'll have a profit for the first time today. Josh tables eight six of hearts, showing us that he's on a straight draw. There's one card to come. The river is the queen of clubs, giving us a set that we don't necessarily need. We show it. Josh doesn't have it in him to look at me in the eyes, but we do our best impression of the Sistine Chapel. Oh, nice fight with you. This one is a bittersweet win. It's great to be up a few hundred dollars after hours of being down, but if someone was going to hit a river on me in an all-in pot, I'd be okay if that person was Josh. He's a one-of-a-kind guy. This is when we officially meet him. What, what is your name? Josh. Josh. Yeah. Cool, man. Nice to meet you, bro. Yeah, nice to meet you. Thank you Thanks for uh, making this video fun. For and sure. And for taking care of all the dealers and everything as well. For sure. That's Absolutely, been very cool. It's people like him who make the meetup game special. I'm not sure that he would have played that hand the same way if he was up against anyone else, so I feel somewhat guilty winning it. I think to myself, what would Josh have done if he won? And then the answer hits me. In honor of Josh, I'm gonna give you 50 bucks. Thank you so much. Yeah. Two hours go by, we're at the eighth table of the night and we pick up a six of diamonds in the cutoff. Honor of the gun plus one raises to 20. A player in middle position calls, the hijack calls, I call, the button calls, we're going five ways to the flop, it comes king eight deuce with two diamonds, we've got the nut flush draw. It checks to me, checking and betting are reasonable options, I bet 55 in anticipation of drilling the flush. The button calls, the pre-flop raiser folds, the middle position player calls, the hijack calls, it's down to four of us. The turn is the jack of hearts. Checks to us once more, since the middle position player and the hijack checked the flop after the initial pre-flop raiser checked, and then no one raised my bet with multiple opponents in there and a flush draw, it's possible that no one's that strong. I'm the most likely person to have two pair or a set. I stick with my semi-bluffing ways and bet 210. The button is less sure about quitting than Brett Favre, but he eventually folds. The middle position player calls. The action's on the hijack. He's got the glint of someone with devious intentions. I already know what's coming. He rips it in for 875 total. It's 665 more for us to call. I want to make it so bad. The only strong hand that makes much sense for the opponent to have is potentially King Jack or a set of deuces or eights. Still, he probably would have raised on the flop with a set after I bet two other players called, so he's really only representing King Jack. If he's doing this as a semi bluff with a hand like Queen 10 or 10 9 of diamonds or hearts, we've got him crushed. Calling is so much more fun, and the odds aren't terrible for me if the middle position player also calls. With only one card left, I reluctantly fold, the middle position player also folds, the hijack shows that he does have King Jack, we make it disciplined, and what is probably correct lay down, we need to know for sure if it is though. There's only one way to do that. It's kind of against the rules, but otherwise, quite a few viewers are going to be left unsatisfied. I can't let you guys down. Also, I just kind of want to know, while the dealer's distracted, we burn the top card and see that the river would have been the three of hearts. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not really though. It feels much better knowing that we would have bricked and lost several hundred more had we called. We're back below the even mark, but a gentleman named Todd helps ease the pain with New England IPA and a couple of Trey Lance rookie cards because he knows that I'm a big 49ers fan. The crowd here has gone above and beyond to make us feel welcome. I just want to win and make this event even better, and I'm prepared to stay all night if I have to. We pick up Ace King suited eight hours into the session. We're in the big blind and it's a straddle pot. The player in middle position limps in for 10. The hijack raises to 40. The cutoff calls. He's a young guy named Joe who told me he wants to come after me. He's going to get an opportunity. I 3 bet to 175. This is enough to get the initial limper and the hijack to fold. The cutoff calls for 135 more. We're playing a 3 bet pot out of position. The flop comes 10 6 4 rainbow. 
This isn't a good flop for my three bet range. I'm up against someone who's probably gonna be sticky. I check, the card off checks back. Good sign for us. The turn is the five of diamonds, no help. I check, rather than check back, the card off bet's 25. I'm a fan of this play. I've never gotten a trillion to one on a call before. I make it, the river is the queen of clubs. I check, the dude who says that he's after me bets 100. I don't expect to be ahead nearly ever. My hand is face up, but I'm getting over five to one and I won't be able to sleep in my comfortable bed at this luxurious MGM property if I'm getting bluffed for this amount. I make my decision being almost completely sure that I'm not good. Right. Joe shows that he has king six of diamonds for third pair and gets the whale to pay him off. He wins it. The rest of the table is confused on how that's the winner. To appease him, I show that I called with ace king of hearts. I told you guys that my hand was face up. The stack is going in the wrong direction. We're currently down 500, but it isn't too late to punish everyone at this table for what just happened. We've got king queen offsuit in the cutoff. A player in middle position limps in for five. It's not going to stay that amount. We raised to 30. The small blind has a hand that he wants to play. He three bets to 125. The limper folds. King queen offsuit is a pure fold in this situation. If it were suited, we'd call her four bet. There's a loophole to preflop charts that not many people know about though. When you're stuck, you're allowed to pretend like your cards are suited. That's what I do is I make the call. We're heads up in position. The flop comes 743 rainbow. We've got two overs and a fake backdoor flush draw. It's not much, but the flop is actually pretty decent for our range. We can have a straight and all the sets plus over pairs. The small blind down bets to 80. I can't call. Once again though, stuck rules apply. I raise to 200 to fold out most of the opponent's ace high hands. This doesn't do the trick. The small blind calls. His name is also Todd by the way. Different dude than the Todd who gave me the football cards. You're getting me distracted with all this Todd talk. We've got a hand to give up on. Except the turn is the king of clubs, improving us a top pair. The small blind checks. I wouldn't be too surprised if he has ace king. If he has a pocket pair like jacks or tens, he's probably only gonna call one more bet anyway. I checked back to almost guarantee that we at least get to showdown and also to exhibit some weakness in the off chance that the opponent has something worse and wants to turn it into a bluff on the river. The dealer puts out the queen of diamonds so we improved the top two pair after raising with complete garbage on the flop. To make things better, Todd bets 375. What's Todd trying to say he has here? A set of kings or queens? Maybe aces or ace-king? There's only one possible combo of kings and queens each, so it's super unlikely he has us beat that way. We only have 990 total. If we jam for 615 on top, there's a good chance that we can get called by aces or ace-king, which are the two hands that we're most likely to be up against. We're going for it and are all in. We don't get snap called. That's a relief. The opponent folds and shows that he has ace five of spades. He flopped a double gutter and a backdoor flush draw. He doesn't get there. We get a fortunate run out and the opponent even gives us a nice little stimulus package on the river to get us back to the even mark. Shout out to Todd's wife, Chris. That's a sugar pie honey bunch who I was told to apologize to on behalf of Todd for Todd blowing their money. We're back to even on the session and we pick up king nine suited under the gun plus two. I raised to 15. Cut off calls. The small blind has been the most aggressive person pre-flop at the table, and it's been a pretty aggressive table. He three bets to 60. I have another pure fold. I don't feel like doing that when the small blind is untrustable. I four bets to 225. That's right, we're here to play. The cutoff folds. The small blind may not have three bet me light. He calls. This could be a dicey situation since the pot is already large. Don't worry, dudes. The flop comes king nine four with two clubs. We've got top two pair and a four bet pot. I feel like dancing in the street. The small blind checks. We've got pretty much the nuts. I down bet to 150 to get calls out of hands like queens, jacks, and maybe tens. The player doesn't look thrilled. It looks like he's missed, and we've got everything, so he probably did. The price is just too good for him. The small blind calls. The turn is the queen of hearts. Not great because there's a chance that we're up against pocket queens, or maybe even king queen or jack ten for the straight. The small blind checks. I check back for pot control. I probably should have bet. The river is the seven of hearts, so the backdoor flush gets there. The small blind checks. I'm not checking back again. I bet 450. My line should look odd after letting the opponent see a free river. I'd hate to get check raised because there's at least a small chance that the small blind could have a hand containing two hearts. Not much time goes by before the opponent folds. I let him know that he made the right decision. Good fold. Fun one. Yeah, we had to show that we're four betting with king nine since this table needs to get the message that we're out for blood. About 15 minutes later, we get pocket kings one more time after light four betting. I raised a 15 from under the gun. I told you that this is an aggressive table. A player in middle position three bets to 55. I'm not four betting king nine suited and only calling with kings. I re-raised to 200. That's not enough to get a fold from the opponent. He calls. This could be a big one. 
We're heads up out of position. The flop comes 10-9-8 rainbow. That's not a good one for a 4-bet range. It's a good one for the opponent's 4-bet calling range, though. I check. There's no bet. The middle position player checks back, indicating there's a good chance we've got the best hand. The turn is the 4 of hearts. There are too many bad river cards for us to allow the opponent an opportunity to see a free one. I bet 300. Just a few seconds go by, then the player folds. We show him that we were betting for value. He says that he had ace 5 suited and missed everything. We're at 400 and not stopping, even in the name of love. Late in the session, we've got ace queen offsuit in the cutoff. It's a straddle pot. The player in middle position limps in for 10. I raised to 50. The under the gun straddler calls. He's played by far the most snug out of anyone here. The middle position player also calls. We're going three ways to the flop. It's queen three deuce rainbow. It's checked to us. We're going for value. I bet 65 to target worse queens and middling pocket pairs. Under the gun calls. This is a little worrisome given his tight nature. The middle position player folds. It's down to heads up. The turn is the seven of diamonds. Under the gun wants control of the pot. He leads for 125. He's repping at least a queen. Perhaps he has a set or something like queen three or queen seven suited. I'm very suspicious that I'm beat, but I'm close to the top of my range and I can't fold. I call. It's another big pot that we're involved in. The river is the eight of hearts. That shouldn't have changed anything. It certainly doesn't scare the opponent. He increases his bet size to 325. I've been playing for nine hours. If I call here and I'm wrong, I'm going to be stuck again. If I fold, I can walk away with a small profit and then head to the bar on property where Andrew and a handful of others have already gone to have drinks and hang out. This particular opponent is probably never bluffing. One more time, I convince myself that the player's line is odd and I've got too good of a hand to part with. Can't fold, nice hand. Oh wow, I'm sorry. Somehow the opponent has ace 10 offsuit and took a very obscure line with intentions of getting me. This is a prime example of why you see me make calls that would otherwise be suspect. People regularly go out of their way to make strange plays against me. This call allows us to win almost an extra $1,000. We lost $600 calling light on the river earlier, and then an additional 100 with ace king, but we still net a few hundred in profit with river calls in spots where we're likely beat the session. To be honest, I'm surprised this one worked out, and so is the rest of the table. I didn't see the bluff up until that. It's the first one. Uh, yeah, I, <laughs> that's I, the first I, 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 I thought that, for sure. That's the first bluff I've ever seen from Tony. I've never <laughs> seen that. Wow. And he told me he has a bluff since no, like, Once a week, I've seen a bluff. That's crazy. Oh, man. That's rare. That's I would have put, that's I that's I put a thousand that you had and you had a monster. Tony just wanted to make the bluff. I played for another 20 minutes and win a few other hands to book a four figure profit after being stuck four figures to start. It's time to celebrate the win with Andrew and everyone else at the bar. Almost 10 hours today for uh, Andrew's first hometown meetup game. And people turned out, man. They did. Awesome. Awesome yeah. to see. Awesome turnout. Games were great. Uh, so many friendly people yeah. here in Detroit, Michigan that were excited to finally partake in this meetup game thing. Long they, overdue. We've been they, trying to plan this for like five years. We have been. We've had a lot of conversations with a lot of people. We started making progress. Coronavirus happens. Not to all that pro all that progress backwards, but then uh, yeah. we were able to uh, finally push it over the finish line, and uh, it was a really good time. I had a yeah. lot of fun. Staff did great, and uh, just the energy here was really fun. It's always cool to go to not only like a new city, but then like I think it's a lot more special, obviously, when it's one of our hometowns. So that was yeah, pretty awesome. For sure. I mean, they put that giant picture of me up on the uh, the walls and on the screens, and uh, that was like a little bit surreal or a lot surreal. Yeah. Uh, so that was like really cool to see, and uh, everyone was just like so happy to like have the uh, the vlog things uh, here and to be able to partake. H had you played here quite a bit before the vlog? You know? I, I played here a bunch of times. Uh, there's another, there's another couple of casinos here in Detroit that I've, that I've dabbled in as well. But uh, yeah, I've, I've played here. I've played here some. Um, I didn't start playing poker until I moved away from Michigan. But like every time I come back home to uh, see the, the family and try and shoot down here and get some sessions in, uh, whether it's no limit or PLO, and nice. uh, yeah, I played here a bunch. Cool. Well, uh, yeah, it was a long session today. Battled hard. Got stuck 1100 early on. Ended up running super hot at the end at that last table, so that was great. And I won 1460 on the night, uh, and just it was just a special night overall. Are you gonna move to Detroit? Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Very cool. There's always a lot going on during meetup games, so I'm happy to have the session go well. Now I feel like I can relax a little with the viewers, and even some of Andrew's family come out to say hello. 
The fun extends into the next day when we hang out with more viewers in the sports book. Four players from the Toledo football team make the drive to meet us. I have them all sign a football for me, they're great dudes, and instantly have become my new favorite college football team. This event is a huge success, it couldn't have gone much better. That's it for this one guys. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, I'd appreciate it if you hit the like and subscribe buttons because it helps out the channel a ton. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to let me know in the comment section. I'm happy to get back to you. Big thanks goes out to the MGM Grand in Detroit. That was just a, a really memorable and special uh, meetup game event. And you know, it, just people welcomed Andrew and I with open arms and uh, because it was his hometown, it just made it that much cooler. Um, people like Josh uh, <laughs> made it a lot more fun and uh, the two Todd's as well. So uh, thanks to all those guys and everybody who, who joined. Um, next meetup game is going to be May 12th. That one's going to be my first WPT event. And I mentioned earlier, we're going to be doing our best to make that one extra special and unique. So be sure to go out there. Uh, they just sent me this to uh, welcome me on board. And I just can't wait for everything that's to come with WPT. Um, and then let's see, I'll be going out to the lodge in Austin. I'll be going out there April 26th through May 1st. And then I'll be going out there again, May 16th through the 23rd for the lodge championship series. Uh, May 22nd, uh, Andrew, Doug and I are going to be doing uh, a meetup game. So I'll have more information in the description box below, but I uh, hope to see you guys in Oklahoma or in Texas coming up. All right, stay safe, good luck at the tables and I'll see you next time.